Alright guys, welcome back to another episode of Switch Tutorials, episode 3. In this episode we're going to look at how to install emulators so you can run all your favourite games from older game consoles on your Nintendo Switch. We're talking games going all the way back to uh, the Sega Master System or the original NES, all the way through to uh, PlayStation 1 games, GameCube games, Nintendo 64 games. You can run them all on your Nintendo Switch. And because these games are old and are a lot smaller, you can have hundreds of these games on your Switch, so you'll never run out of things to play on your Nintendo Switch. So let's get into this. So if you haven't followed the first two tutorials, I recommend uh, doing that. There's a playlist link in the description. Episode 1 shows you how to jailbreak your Switch so that you can run the homebrew menu from the album uh, using free custom firmware. And episode 2 shows you how to install games, NSP file games, XCI file games, and how to dump your game cartridges to the SD card so you can run them uh, from the SD card without the cartridge being inserted. All that's covered in the first two episodes. So let's get into this. So we're going to hold down the R button, we're going to open album, that'll take us into our homebrew menu, and then we'll go on the homebrew app store. Now there's only one emulator we really need to download even though there's lots of emulators on the Nintendo Switch and that's because this one emulator is the best, biggest emulator, most polished emulator that has pretty much everything you need. So if we go into the emulator section in the Homebrew App Store and then find RetroArch and download it. So this is the only emulator we really need. There are other emulators in there that you can try out but this is the big one, the biggest emulator that uh, allows you to play all these different games from multiple different systems uh, is RetroArch. Okay, so there we go, we have it installed. Now for some reason it takes a long time to download and install for me. Um, so if you have the same issue, just be patient and wait for it uh, to complete. And then we can back out of this, go back into album while holding down R, and then we have RetroArch. And I recommend running it first of all, even though we don't have any games for it yet because that will create some extra folders on the SD card and then we can just quit straight out of it. All right, so now we just need to unplug the SD card and plug it into the computer. Okay, so we just want to open up the SD card now on your computer and you'll see that we now have a RetroArch folder in here and if we go into the Switch folder, we also have a RetroArch NRO file. Okay, so now that we have that installed, the next thing we need is some games to run. So I've got three games here. I've got uh, Alex Kidd in Miracle World, which is a Sega Master System game. Also, we have uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! Forbidden Memories, which is a PlayStation 1 game. The Zelda Ocarina of Time, which of course is a classic Nintendo 64 game. So we're going to install all three and run them all using the Retro Arch emulator. So in order to download ROMs, there's a couple of sites that I can suggest. One is MU Paradise. Uh, you just go to ROMs, ISOs and games. And then you've got all your titles here that you can scroll through. Next, we've got CoolROM.com or CoolROM.com.au. And then you can go to ROMs and then just select something. So Sony PlayStation. And then again, it's alphabetical order. You can just go ahead and select a game. Uh, don't click the big download button, that's misleading, that's a download manager that could have viruses in it, who knows. Uh, you want to click this little hidden alternative download link down here, which will just be a direct download to the ROM. So yeah, anyway, to install these we're going to go into the RetroArch folder, we're going to go into the downloads folder, and we're just going to put them in here. Now you can put these in any folder on your SD card, RetroArch allows you to browse your SD card for the ROMs, but it's easier to just put them in this downloads folder because it will uh, basically, that the downloads folder is the first folder that will come up on RetroArch when you're looking for a game. So it's a good idea just to put it in here. So we've got Alex Kid and Miracle World. I will just grab this and copy that into the folder. Legends of Zelda, Ocarina of Time. I'll copy that into the same place. And then we have Yu-Gi-Oh! Forbidden Memories which I will also just grab both files and put them in here. I think it's really just the bin file you need for uh, for PS1 games, but just to be safe, I'll copy both of them in here. Okay, there we go. So now all you have to do is unplug the SD card and plug it back into the Switch, and we'll boot back into our custom firmware and launch RetroArch. Okay, so here we are back on the Switch. So I'm gonna hold down the R button and launch the album, and then run RetroArch and here we go. So there's quite a lot of options in here. If you go into load content, 
you'll see the downloads directory pops up straight away. That's why I said it's a good idea just to put your ROMs in there because then you don't have to browse the whole SD card for them. You just go into downloads folder. However, no, no ROMs are showing up and that's because uh, it's not able to recognize any of the file types because we don't have any cores downloaded yet. So we need to download some cores. The cores are what allows us to run the games from the different systems. So we're gonna go into load core. As you can see, there's a few in here already, but we're gonna go to download core, which will get all the ones from their servers. And as you can see, there's all these different systems that are supported. So I'm gonna look for uh, the cores for the games that I have. So I've got a Nintendo 64 game. So I'm gonna download a, a Nintendo 64 core. And then I'm also, while that's going, I'm gonna download the PlayStation 1 and Sega Master System. So there we go, Sega MS for Master System. We're gonna go ahead and download that one for my Master System game. And then finally, we also have a Sony PlayStation game. So I'm gonna download the core for Sony PlayStation. All right, there we go. So now I can back out, load content, go to downloads, and all the games show up. So I'm, I can launch the Sega Master System game here, first of all, and it configures the, the controller all ready for you. So there we go, 1986 Sega, and the game is indeed working. There we go. How about that? You can play an old original Sega Master System game here on my Nintendo Switch. Grab that. Get the kind of super punch. Perfect, runs absolutely fine, as you'd expect from a, a game this old, but yeah, it runs fine. So, uh, basically, if you hold down the plus button and the minus button at the same time on your Joy-Cons, or just press them both in at the same time, it will open the quick menu. Now from here, you can resume game just to go back into the game again. Um, or you can, of course, restart the game, close content, you can take a screenshot, you can even create save states and load your save states so that uh, you can return to a certain point in the game. Uh, then you've got, you know, add, you can add the game to favorites, so it'll show up in your favorites list. You know, there's even cheats, shaders, all that kind of stuff built in here. So, yeah, we'll, we'll go ahead and close content and try and load another one of our games. So we'll go to load content, downloads, in fact, let's actually get a frame rate counter up, which you can do by going into uh, settings. And then I think it's in on-screen display. It's in on-screen notifications. We can display frame rate and that'll give us a little frame rate counter in the bottom left-hand corner. All right, so now we can go back to load content, downloads, and this time I'll load uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! Forbidden Memories, which is a Sony game. So when it doesn't recognize what core you want to use, it will give you the option to select. So we will just select the Sony PlayStation. And with PS1 games, it will come up saying that, uh, oh, maybe not. Or normally it comes up saying that you might want to install a PlayStation BIOS file in order to improve uh, compatibility, but this game seems to run fine without one, as do most PS1 games. So we can start button, and there we go, that works. Let's do new game. Okay, hopefully I can actually get into a game here. Okay, finally. Here we go. Yes, yeah, 60 frames per second still. Which is absolutely fine. A zombie and a plant should fuse together. There we go. Alright, so. That is, uh, yeah, there's a PlayStation 1 game also running in the same emulator, absolutely fine. Sure we can fuse these two as well. Boom, there we go, that's a more powerful monster. So yeah, as you can see, this game runs absolutely fine, as do a lot of other PlayStation 1 games. Uh, so next we'll go ahead and do plus minus at the same time, and then close content to exit. And now we will load content, downloads, and load our uh, Nintendo 64 game, Zelda Ocarina of Time. And you will see that something interesting will happen here. 
what I mean by interesting is that it has crashed. It crashed the whole atmosphere. Boom, there we go. Fatal error occurred. So what the hell's going on here? So this is nothing really to worry about. I'll show you guys how to fix this issue. Um, I believe I've only seen this happen on Nintendo 64 games on RetroArch, but I believe it can also happen on potentially other game types as well so but don't worry this is totally fixable okay so here we are booted back up after the crash so why did that happen so this is a problem that happens with some homebrew not a lot of homebrew but particularly retroarch and the issue is that it doesn't have access to certain parts of memory that it needs to access in order to run nintendo 64 games and the reason for that is when you launch the homebrew menu through the album um it doesn't have the significant permissions in order to be able to access uh, to read and write to certain parts of memory that RetroArch needs to read and write to to run Nintendo 64 games and potentially other titles. Now there is a way around this and this is why we installed um, Atmosphere version 0.8.6 in episode 1 is because there is a way to run the homebrew menu with full permissions so that it is able to grant those permissions to RetroArch, which is then able to uh, access the parts of memory that it needs to access, and then it won't crash when it tries to run Nintendo 64 games. So, um, now there's two ways to do it. You can either install the homebrew menu as an NSP file, and then it will show up in the library as a, as just like another app like these games show up as, and you can run it from there. However, that doesn't always work on 7.0.1. Uh, it doesn't always install properly. So the easiest way is to just hold down the R button and launch one of your games uh, or any app that you have up here on the uh, in the main library up here. Uh, if you hold down the R button and I launch, you know, say Breath of the Wild or any game and I keep the R button held down just as I normally do when I launch the album, but this time I'm doing it while I'm launching a game, then it will launch the homebrew menu. And the thing, the reason it's different here is when you run a proper licensed game, like a proper application, the Switch grants that game the proper permissions it needs to read and write to certain parts of the memory uh, that you wouldn't get when you launch the album. And because we've redirected the game to launch the homebrew menu instead by holding down the R button, then it's this homebrew menu now has those full permissions because we launched it from uh, you know, launching a game instead of from the album. So now if I go and run RetroArch, uh, it will have the full read and write permissions to the locations in memory that it needs. So now if I go to load content and I go to downloads and I go to Legends of Zelda Ocarina of Time, we'll see that this time instead of crashing, we get the game running as it should. There we go. So yeah, simple as that. Uh, so when you're using RetroArch, it's a good idea to launch the homebrew menu uh, through a game. So launch a game uh, to boot up the homebrew menu instead of the normal album. Uh, it takes a bit longer to open the homebrew menu, but it will grant it the full permissions it needs. So there we go. Now, as you can see, the frame rate's a little slow. You can see we're dropping frames quite significantly. Now, what you can do is you can actually overclock the system, uh, which again carries some risk whenever you overclock the CPU you run the risk of potentially overheating it uh, because whenever you increase the clock speed, it generates more heat. So you are putting your switch at risk by overclocking. But uh, there's a few overclocks here that are not too uh, you know, demanding on the switch. For example, the first one here is the boost performance 1224 megahertz, 1581 megahertz. And let's restart RetroArch as well. Maybe it needs a restart to take effect properly the overclock, I don't know. Um, probably not, but just a precaution. So let's run it again and see if we get slightly better performance now. So yeah, we're going up a few frames per second. Yeah, 58.3, that's definitely higher. So yeah, you can overclock your uh, CPU of your switch to uh, increase the performance, but obviously don't, you know, don't overclock it too high uh, for long for long periods of time in order to prevent you know damaging it but as you can see the game runs we you know the uh, the joy cons are working and I can create a new save file 
So there we go guys, that is how you run older games from older systems on the RetroArch emulator on your Nintendo Switch. And through this you have now access to hundreds of games potentially that you could have all on your SD card that you could run at any time and you'll never run out of games to play with this uh, with this emulator. So, so yeah, anyway guys, that's it for this video. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the video or found the information useful and bear in mind uh, the playlist link is in the description to the previous episodes and the next episode we'll be looking at how to mod our games with layered FS so we can actually swap out the textures on our on our characters, put custom levels onto our games, stuff like that. Uh, that's all going to be covered in the next episode and then in the episode after that we're going to look at more cheat style mods like modifying your health and your ammunition or uh, money, currency, that kind of stuff is going to be covered in the next uh, few episodes. So, so thank you guys for watching. If you liked the video please leave a like and subscribe and I'll hopefully see you guys in the next one.